So which is it? Is it the balance or is it stereo pan that we need? My guess is that you might never have actually considered this before or really know what the difference is. Yet funny enough, it actually makes a massive difference on your mix. And you'll see shortly why this makes such a huge impact and in, not just in Logic Pro, but a lot of other tools. We're gonna to take a look at Logic Pro today as well as Ableton, Cubase and Pro Tools to discover what the difference between stereo balance and stereo panning actually is. Hey, my name is Steve and welcome back to Command Shift New. It's just a really quick video today to clear up something that you might have discovered in your door. Or it may be something that you've never seen before or even considered. The pan knob itself might be kind of lying to you. And you might think it does one thing when it's only something very different. Let's dive into Logic Pro and start explaining what I'm talking about. And don't worry, we'll also check out Ableton, Cubase and Pro Tools to see how it works in those doors as well. Let's dive in. So right now I just have this very simple drum beat and pattern and one drum is coming through the left speaker and the other drum is coming through the right speaker. Let's have a listen. Of course, if you haven't got very good speakers or you're watching this on a phone, do make sure that you're popping on your headphones so you can really hear that there is one drum in the left and one drum in the right. Now, when we look at the door, we can see this pan knob here on the track header in the track workspace. We can also see it in the inspector down here. And if we look at our full mixer, we'll also find it in there as well. That knob you've probably seen and used before and you can pan your item to the left, hard left, or to the right, hard right there as well. And I can even option click and have it return to the center to reset the default. The thing is though, you probably assume that when you're panning it to the left, you're putting all of that information, all of that sound over into the left speaker. And when you pan the other way, you're putting it all the way into the right speaker. However, that's actually not the case. With the default one in Logic Pro, as is the case with quite a few other doors, the default option is a balance between the left and the right speaker. What this actually means is that as we turn that pan knob to the left, we're not moving the sound to the left. We're just increasing the volume of the left speaker. This is a little bit weird to wrap your head around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna play it. We have that tom sort of sound in the left speaker and in the right speaker, we've got this snare sound. And as I move and pan my knob all the way to the left, you'll actually hear the snare disappear. And this is the same as well when we pan all the way to the right. So in both of those cases, we're not actually making the sound move to the left or the right. We're just getting more of the left channel or more of the right channel. That means if you've got a very wide spacious element, you're not actually putting all of that detail into the left or right speaker. Now this could be a bit of a problem. Imagine if you've recorded a full drum kit, for example, if you're just using the main pan knob, you're just getting more of the left microphone or more of the right microphone. Beautiful spacious guitar lines or beautiful you know, synth lines that have lots of effects, lots of reverb. You're only boosting the left or the right. You're not dealing with the full sound. This has a bit of a knock-on effect because when you only pan these items to the left or the right and you basically only increase the volume of the left speaker or the right speaker, you're halving the amount of detail in that part because you're only hearing predominantly one side. But you're also not really moving it from the center. It's like the instrument stays in the middle of your mix and you just hear it with only your left ear or only your right ear. What we actually want sometimes with these stereo files is to physically feel like we're moving the actual person or the instrument or whatever to the left or to the right. And this is where something called stereo pan comes in. Now, when you right click on this knob here, you're not gonna see any of these options in the track workspace. You've basically got pan and it can switch between the send one and so on volumes. But if you come down to the inspector or if you come over to the mixer as well, you can right click and change the function of this pan knob. We can change it to stereo pan, and this changes the way that it looks. What this actually does is it has sort of two controls. As you pan to the left, it's actually taking the right speaker information and moving it across to the center and over to the left speaker. As you pan the other way towards the right, it's taking the left speaker and moving it across to the right speaker. So that way, instead of taking a stereo sound file and only getting the left or the right channel, we're actually moving both left and right channels to one or the other. Let me pan again to the left and to the right so you can hear this change. Thank you. 
This critically is so different, so much different to the basic pan knob. You can really hear both details and you don't lose any of the drum beat. Now, obviously with this drum pattern with one drum all the way to the left and all the way to the right, that's not normally how we mix or record things. But if you've got a very spacious file that you're trying to put into this mix and you just use the basic balance knob, you're going to be missing out on information as you pan that to the left or the right. Switching it over to the stereo balance microphone, it's gonna make you move the player around. This is gonna have so much more accuracy and detail and gonna have a bit of a fuller sound, so to speak. It's gonna be rich and detailed and clear. The other cool thing as well is that we're obviously moving left to right speakers, but if you wanna swap the image, you can do that very quickly and easily here too. If you come down to your mixer while it's center panned, just hold down the command key on your keyboard and click that knob. What that has done has changed it to this orange kind of indicator, and that means that the left and the right speakers are now switched. So if I play this one, we should now hear the snare over in the left and the tom to the right. So that could be quite useful as well. You could switch the stereo image and then you can still pan it left to right as you see fit. Now, what does this look like in other doors? Because they have the same problem as well. So down here on Ableton's mixer, you've also got a standard balance knob and you can drag that to the left and to the right quite easily from there. However, if you right click, you can change this over to a split stereo pan mode. And this gives us something similar to the stereo pan knob in Logic. It looks a little bit different though, because basically you've got a left and a right control. So the information that's in the left speaker and the information that's in the right speaker can be placed anywhere from left to right. So this left speaker at the moment is panned all the way to the left, right speaker all the way to the right. If I wanted to put both of them over in the right, I could click and drag on the left channel and put it over 50R to that side. So that means it's all the way over to the right. And if I wanted to swap it so that the left is in the right and the right is in the left, I could come down to the right, drag it the other way, and there we are, now it's 50 to the left. So basically I've flipped my stereo image there. But you can see how powerful this is. You could, for instance, make a signal mono by simply bringing both of them to the center. And that means that there's no difference in information between the left and the right channel. You could have it a little bit to the left uh, but quite a lot to the right, so therefore it pushes it more to the right. So it's very much the same as the stereo balance mob in Logic. Moving over now to Cubase, we have a very similar thing. I've got a simple track here, and over on the left-hand side, I've got the inspector. Now, in this option here, it's currently set to just the balance. So we're moving to the left or to the right, and that means that we're only hearing our drum, you know, tom, and only hearing our snare as we do that, because it's balancing more left or more right. But again, if we right click this one and go stereo combined panner, it gives us something a little bit similar to the stereo pan knob in Logic Pro, just visually laid out as a horizontal line rather than a knob itself. We can drag this in so that the left and the right speaker are all the way over here on the right, or we can just have it a little bit so the left speaker there is in the middle, but the right speaker is you know, over to the right. And if you drag it past the other one, it goes into opposite mode. So at this point, we've flipped them round. So the right is on the left side and the left is on the right side. So very much the same as what we just saw in Ableton and Logic. Now the final one to look at today is Pro Tools. And this is actually an industry standard in a way with, with audio recording and engineering, and you'll find it in pretty much every recording studio. And one of the reasons that is, is because it's modeled very closely of old consoles, consoles that are still very much in use in studios today. In a studio console, the, you know, the mixing desk that would be in front of the, the control room, you would have lots and lots of mono channels. And if you had a stereo file, you'd have to send the left side of that stereo file down one ch channel and the right side down the second channel. So you'd have two channels. Because of this, you have a pan knob on either side, a little bit like Ableton having two controls, one for the left, one for the right. In an analog console, it would be very much the same. That means that when we look inside Pro Tools, we've got a similar sort of channel strip feel because it's modeled off those console desks. And on a stereo channel, you'll see both left and right. There is actually no option to have a balanced knob. If I create a new track and I make this track a mono track, you'll notice that there is a balance knob putting that to the left or to the right. But that's because it's a mono source. It's just moving it between left and right speakers. But with any stereo track by default, Pro Tools is going to have two controls, one for the left speaker and one for the right. And we can do all sorts of things like pan it more to the right. So this way the left channel information is in both speakers, but the right channel is over on the right hand side, which means that it feels more to the right. We could push those to their opposite sides, flipping 
the stereo image yet again. So there we go, that's stereo panning versus balanced pan knobs. They're very different and have a different purpose behind them. And one of the reasons that Pro Tools I think is used so heavily for mixing is because it does that by default. And in other doors, you have to remember to turn this on. You have to remember to take your stereo tracks in Logic, for example, and right click and change it over to stereo pan mode. Don't know why it doesn't do it by default, but if you do that, in your mixes, I believe your mixes will sound a lot clearer and more spaced out and take advantage of the stereo space so much more because of this. So it's something to bear in mind. I hope that clears up any confusion that you might've had about it and helps you out. Now, throughout this video, if you've been wondering why I have so many doors, the short answer is I'm a music lecturer. I teach in a lot of different doors, but if you want the longer answer, then why not subscribe to this channel? I've got a video coming out shortly where I debate the sort of differences between doors and my sort of opinion on them, particularly as a music educator, having worked with so many of them and worked with a lot of students who use different ones all the time. So why not subscribe for that one? But otherwise, I hope this has helped and I will catch you in the next one.